Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to attempt to um, drive Duke and Earl together. Now, this spring, I believe I tried to drive them once or twice, and we had a little troubles in the spring, but nothing serious. And then, actually, yesterday we drove them around as a team, and they did quite well. Um, this morning, earlier, I had taken off with uh, I had I got uh, Bill and Ken on that stone boat, giving them a little exercise. And William is up splitting wood for us this morning. I'm going to drive these guys hopefully around the cornfield and see how they do driving as a team. And I'll explain a few things as we go along. Sometimes that wood splitter does make some weird noises, so hopefully that doesn't spook them. Hey, hey. Oh, that cap step. Cap step. So today I decided to use, take the whip because I figured I'd have to use it and I used it yesterday. And it worked pretty good generally, not always, but generally Earl, which is my horse on my right, is the faster horse of the two and Duke is a little bit slower. So being as a team to get them to walk together, you need to keep after the slow horse so that he walks up with the faster horse. Also, one other thing I've done, and I don't, I don't normally do it, but with the situation of these two young colts, two young, well, they're three years old. They're, it's time for them to get to working good. But anyways, I put a short strap between and the tar in between their britches, right there, a short little strap. Um, that keeps them from spreading out too much. Careful. Um, but they've been doing really well. I say they've been doing, we, yesterday we hitched them up for the first time as a team since way back in the spring. And uh, they have done quite well. We're not doing a lot of stopping them and making them stand. Because in my opinion, even though to tell them to stop and teach them to stand is so important, I don't really want to spend too much time on it right yet. I'm more concerned about just driving them around and keeping them in good control and steering them. And when I do stop them, it'll just be for a very short time. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hi, hi. I tap step. Careful. We'll go around the driveway one more time before I head out around the cornfield. Careful. I'm asked sometimes how I how I go about training horses. And I can't even give a, an answer because it changes so much as to how I do it from day to day. There's just so many different ways that, can be, that it can be done. There's so many different ways that I do it. So I think we're going to head out around the cornfield and it's a possibility that going past the wood splitter that William is working on might scare them. Hopefully not. Careful yeah, arrow. Get up, Duke. Come on, Duke.
Well, that was really good. I was pleased how nothing scared them there at the wood splitter, although just everything new, all kinds of things to look at. And, but uh, also with all that mud there, I had to be very careful that they didn't try to take off while I was staying in that mud because I would never have been able to get very good traction for myself to hold them careful. But it's amazing as colts how how um, they're so concerned about what's going on everywhere else. You can see their ears perked up and they're looking out to our left for some reason. Probably lady and breeze out there, I don't know. But anyways. Touching them with that whip seems to help a lot just to keep them going. Well, the beauty about a whip is, careful, is when, if you use the whip, if you're careful, you can actually keep the same amount of um, tension on their, on their bits. And, but if you use the lines, you tend to lose tension on their bits. And so it just messes the other horse up. Careful. Careful, careful. Oh. I cast up. Oh. Oh. I stop. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. I cast out. Oh. Nice step.
Oh. Okay, we made her home. Go. Oh. Cast up. Cast up. Over there. Oh. 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 No.
So this is the first time I've tied these guys up to this truck body with harnesses on lawn like this. And of course everything's all new to them. So I will just slowly kind of push them into place and get them hitched up. I might ask William to come over and help get them hitched up. But after getting hitched up, they're just gonna stand right here. And that's all they're gonna do. They're just gonna stand here, being hitched up. And they'll do stupid things without a doubt, kinda, um, sometimes they'll even fall over on the pole and things like that. And, uh, but they just have to kinda learn by, the, by themselves in a situation like this. Sometimes it is hard to get them hitched up, but we'll see how it goes. Say it, I expect it a little bit better than this. Get over there. Come on, get over there. Get over there. That's a boy. Get over there. Get over. Hey. Get over there. Come here. Come here. Come here. Get up here. That a boy. Come here. Oh. Now relax. What's twisted? Looks like the tug is twisted. Nope, it's not. Really? This one? No, this one. Possible. Give me. Give me. Ew. Give me. Ew. Come here. Hip back up here. Come here. There we go. Let's take a little more length to hitch. Just want to get these lines back here. So in a situation with young colts like this especially, I like to have these tugs just as tight as possible. That will raise the pole up into the air as much as possible. So they'll be less apt to 
get hung up in it. And that tug is twisted. Oops. Okay, so we got it all hitched up good. And now they're just gonna stand here. And they'll probably stand here for an hour. And the flies are bad, they're stomping the flies. And, but they're gonna have to get used to these things. So this is why they're gonna have to spend a lot of time right here doing nothing, just standing. Another thing about this big sled, and a lot of people don't realize it, um, it's not like I can just, even though this, these horses walk nicely when I'm line driving them, um, it's not like I can just take right off and pull the sled. They actually physically and mentally can't even pull this sled. I don't know what this sled weighs, but it's amazing to me. A young pair of horses like this um, just does not know how to work and pull right from the get-go. They have to be taught that. It's possible that within a couple years, these guys might go to a pulling contest and pull 10,000 pounds. And yet right now, they can't even pull this empty sled. But that's just the way it is with, with horses. They actually have to be taught how to pull. It's just not natural, naturally in them until they're taught. So, I'm going to just leave these horses stand here and they'll probably be here for about an hour. It's possible that they could get into a lot of trouble here, so I'm not going to be very far away. Um, but uh, they can tip over, they can lay on the pole, they can do all kinds of stupid things. So, but I'll be back and we'll keep a close eye on them. I'm thinking that probably I think I told you earlier that I was going to try and train these two just as is, but the, the, they're so different. Early is so much faster than, than Duke that uh, I'm thinking I'm probably going to, at least the first stages, um, put Ken with each of them individually and work them that way. Ken is so big and so able to control them that it works really good. So that's probably what I'll end up doing. So I left the camera on the horses to see what they would do and then I went to work. But uh, I decided to show you some of the times here where they kind of freaked out a little bit while standing here. But overall they did really good. Okay, go ahead and hitch that outside one if you can. Yep. Yeah. 
come in. Don't drop the even, just hold it up in the thing. Come here, Earl. Took me give here. Hey, okay, down, let it down. Okay. Why don't you reach right over here and unsnap him when I tell you? Okay, and snap them both. I cast out. Cast out. Oh. oh. Okay, go to the heads. Take Earl in first. Oh, careful. Come on, Earl. Come on. Oh. If you can take off the outside line and the check rein and the bridle and do go right ahead. Just hold him right there. Yeah, go ahead and let him have water. So here we are the next day. I decided because of the trouble that I had driving the horses over the tongue of the sled and just having the sled there in general, they seem to be scared of it. I decided I would take each colt individually and drive them around, walking them over the pole and just getting them used to the sled. I took out Earl earlier and uh, as I was, and he did good but then I realized I should be taping this so you guys could see what what I'm doing so now I have Duke and we're doing the same thing that Earl did. We're just stepping over the pole and just going in a circle around the sled just to get him used to it. So after a few times of just going around and round, I started stopping them beside the pole as if they were going to be hitched up. After I went around the driveway once, here I'm coming back and going to circle the sled the opposite way. I'm looking forward to next week probably getting Ken 
and the colt's hitched onto the sled, so I won't have to do all this walking. I've done a tremendous amount of walking lately behind these colts. So I'm gonna looking forward to riding the sled while they do the work. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and maybe if you hadn't known how much work is involved in training colts, you might be getting an idea from watching what I've been doing. It also might make you understand why the price of horses are so high these days. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. You have a great day.